Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. Got a uh, 3D one for you today because it was requested. Anything I'm clicking on will show up down here in the bottom. Fair warning, this is a long one, but I have time stamped it if you're looking for just a certain spot. Otherwise, grab a cup of coffee and a snack, and here we go. So Hate from the Discord server uh, requested that I do this coffin here. He made a handy little video himself. He also gave me a handy reference image. So when you go to add a reference image to your blender in the main window here, first thing you're going to want to do is center an axis. I don't care which one, just center one of them. Shift A, add image, and you want a reference and not a background. If you add a background, when you, you know, move the camera around, when you get behind it, it disappears. So you want the reference. This is pretty small, but that's okay. Just scale it up. So now what I want is a cube, just shift A, add mesh, you want a cube, then we can scale that up. So he had mentioned that on this drawing that the corners here are not even, and that's totally fine. Um, all you got to do to make sure your corners do come out even in the 3D is pick whichever one you like the best and adjust to that. This being sideways is going to drive me nuts, so I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this one 90 degrees. Now we can take our cube, put it right in here, go to edit mode, control R to add a cut so we can get the middle thing. I don't really care where it is right now. We go down here, grab this face on the Z, bring it down, make sure we're centered as far down as it needs to go. Do the same on the top one. I know I can use little um, number pad shortcuts, but that's all the way on the other side of the keyboard. It's easier just to click. Go back to vertice mode. Go ahead and grab these, oops, these all around this ring. Then we can grab that. If you hit G twice, it just slides it. Slide it to whichever of these corners here you prefer, either this one or this one. Kind of like the higher one myself, or you can split the difference. Scale those on the Y, and bring them out. Grab the top loop, scale it on the Y, bring it in. Nope, didn't work. There we go. So the whole top of the coffin's a little crooked, but that's okay. So if you have a problem like this, where you're trying to get it centered over your thing, but something's crooked, all you really need to do is rotate your reference. Do not rotate your part, because you need to be able to use the axis. And the reason we only want it to scale on the Y and not the entire thing is we don't want it to shrink this direction so that when we go to add our, our uh, bevel and stuff, it'll make sense. So now we can go ahead and scale the whole thing on the X to make it a little thinner. Doesn't really matter how thin right now, just get it kind of close. And what I want to do is compare it to the drawing here so I know where I need my bevel to be. Since I can't see through the box and I can't see through the page, what I can do is hit Control Z to go to infrared mode here. Let's edit this. Let's go to lines. Grab these two and dissolve them. I don't want those edges. And then I can go to face mode. Grab the top face. Make sure I'm centered. Hit I to inset and bring everything in to where it matches the inside there. Get out of x-ray mode, now you can see the little inset. So the drawing here is showing that, it's right here, the top of it is beveled down. So if you want to bevel 
this here, you can oops, loop select, hit B to bevel, and not, no, control B to bevel, and go to town. Problem is, is making weird faces that I don't want. Since it just comes down a little, all you really got to do, since you're still straight on your axis, is grab it on the X and scoot it. And there's your bevel. So since I know what I'm making here is the lid, but I'm going to want the same thing for the coffin portion itself, I want the same dimensions and everything. Go to face mode, grab this bottom face, extrude it on the X, bring it out. Then we'll grab all of these faces here, right click and separate selection. Move that on the X so it stays the same. So there's my open coffin box and here's the lid. Go ahead and grab this edge loop and fill it. Grab it on the X and bring it up some. Almost looks as if from the drawing that the entire thing is the bevel. So grab this edge loop, hit G twice to just scoot it. A more pronounced bevel and a little bit of a lip. Let's go to the box here. Let's, uh, let's hide that picture. So we go to the box, edit that, grab all the things, and then we extrude. Let's see, you gotta be on face mode. Extrude along face normals and just bring it in. about far enough if the height of the box is still um, too deep you can adjust that by selecting this face and this face and just push them in so now we have our open box let's bring the lid back in see it's nice and solid we want it that way what we're gonna do is grab the lid Bring it over to the box. We're going to scale the whole thing up just a little bit, just so it hangs over the edge. We're going to see how far in we've gone. That looks about perfect. So then, oops, we tell the lid that we want to Boolean the difference of the box. Hit apply. Then when you move the lid back, it should have a hole. Now if you notice it didn't cut a hole, it just cut a trench. If you want the hole, what you gotta do, back up. Uh, is temporarily fill in this box. Let's just go ahead and fill that. Let's get the lid in. Make sure your dimensions are correct, or your position's correct. Do your Boolean modifier. Now you can just delete this face. Oops, wrong button. And then on the lid, if you still have weirdness going on, like I've got these, these things here, you can... Um, just select face. Nope, nope. You can just select these faces and get rid of them. Sure, I did that the hard way, but it's all right. It worked. You can also get rid of this um, these lines in here, these edges. If you don't want them, you can get rid of them. It doesn't really make a difference. So now the other thing is when PLA prints, it's a little bit. Um, Weird. Sometimes it prints too big, sometimes it shrinks a little. It, it's If you have things sized exactly like these two are, you're going to have problems. So just go ahead and scale the lid up just a little bit. That way you have a little bit of wiggle room between these two faces when they go to close. So you get a little bit of a gap there. If you want, you could actually even measure that gap. Hit the measuring tool. It's a tiny gap. Oh, and look, 
the bottom is uh, too long. I don't I don't know what happened there, but sure, let's go ahead and fix this up. So it's real simple. All you gotta do is grab these faces along the z-axis, bring them up till it's the right uh, spacing for you. Yeah, no, it looks like the whole thing got away from me on the bottom. There we go. So if all you wanted was a coffin, there you go, that's, um, that's a coffin. If you want to add all the fancy details that he has drawn into it here, that's what we're going to do next. So just like before, go ahead and get everything positioned nice and straight and go to x-ray mode. Some of my dimensions look a little off, that's probably alright. Uh, the box itself is square, it's just the drawing is a little screwy, that's fine. The reason it's off is because I scaled that lid, so I also need to scale the drawing just a little bit. Yeah, something like that, close enough. So one other thing you might want to do periodically is when you're not in edit mode, hit control A and then just go ahead and set all your transforms, rotation, scale, location, all the right. I always hit all just to make sure nothing gets weird because sometimes you'll try to use a tool and it won't cooperate and that's why because your uh, things are all out of scale and stuff. So if we want to do this uh, thing here, it goes down the middle. What we're going to need is some reference points. It also looks like there's a ridge or something right here, so a line going straight down the middle is not going to hurt anything. Let's go ahead and select your top two things there. Subdivide them, that'll give you a dot right in the middle. Do the same thing down here. Then you can connect these two that are going to be perfectly centered in the model, and you don't have to worry about trying to line anything up. If you want you can then subdivide those two that'll give you another point down here so if we go look at our picture we can then just adjust this point by hitting G twice to the bottom of that and that gives us our connector points it does kind of look like the top line is at the actual corner so just to make sure we got that right I'm gonna scoot this down just a little bit, just to make sure everything is where it should be. So that one needs to come up here. I'm going to actually subdivide these two just to give me this one that I can put there. Subdivide those. You get the idea, just keep making extra little dots wherever you need them. So this one, slide it up to, where in the world did it go? It's hard to see the little white dot. Actually, let's not do that. Let's grab both of these so that they move evenly. There we go. Now we can connect these. Actually, let's do all three of them. Connect all of those. Connect all of these. Now we can go to face mode, grab these two faces, and extrude them just a little bit. And now we have our chevron. So if you've made a chevron or any other thing that sticks up and you don't like it uh, sticking up like this, you have a couple of options. You can go to edge mode and bevel this edge however you want or you could connect these vertices uh, button mouse button for you I kind of found that one let me show you what that is you merge vertices at whichever one you want to use uh, I have last bound to four because I use that quite a bit if you were to do that oops If you were to do that, then you get a constant um, taper off the edge, which is not the look I want, but it's something you could do. 
I will probably end up beveling this at some point. You use the mouse wheel to make it a smoother bevel. And then when you click, you get all your options here. All right, so this is how I add shapes to my thing. If I, if I can't just like cut out a thing to put on there, like this triangle deal, that would be too much cutting. I don't feel like doing that. So here's what I do when I'm trying to do that kind of thing. Uh, make sure I select. Add a mesh, whatever mesh is going to work for you. For this, I'm going to use a cube. I'm going to bring the cube up into here. Bring it forward some. Hide this picture. This is driving me crazy. Make sure it's nice and centered. At least on this axis so that I can, I can go up and down later. Now, go to edit mode on the cube. Grab those two, merge in the center, merge in the center, and now we have a triangle. So now I can just grab that on the Z, bring it down, scale it to the appropriate size, just about like that. Scale it on the X. I want it sticking out about the same as the other things here. That looks good. Make sure it's not poking out the back side of the thing. Alright, now that's got an eyeball inside of it. And that eyeball, the way it's drawn, looks kind of like a diamond with a little pupil. So we can do the same thing. Just add another cube. Bring that up here. Rotate it. Uh, hold on. Make sure your axis is good. Rotate it 90 degrees. Nope. Make sure your axis is good. Rotate it 45 degrees. Now it's a diamond instead of a square. Scale it down if you need to. Oops. Put it where it needs to be. Sometimes you may have to ignore your reference drawing just a little bit just to make sure everything is lined up with your model. That looks pretty close. Now, what I can do is tell this one, the triangle, that I would like to... Wait a sec. I think it's inset. So it's inset. So hold on. So make sure your inset is the correct depth. Going with about that. Yeah, let's go to... Just about to the sarcophagus lid. So now I tell this that I want to boolean and union nope I want to do the boolean difference on this cube you see the new thing appeared hit apply and delete this cube now now I've got a little notch in there if I said I'm sure there are easier ways I am aware of boolean tool I just don't like using it I prefer to do it the slow way so I can see what I'm doing before it actually takes effect now, I'll tell the coffin lid that I would like a, oops, not a build, a boolean union of this triangle here, and then delete the triangle, and there's my union. If you go inside the model, you'll see that there's no weird extra geometry. Actually, you probably can't see very well at all, because you just can't see. Maybe that'll help. All right, so now this, so now this triangle needs the eye. I'm gonna do that the same way I do everything else. Just add meshes and keep going. Let's do a cylinder. I like to give them hundred vertices when I'm trying to make them really smooth. 
Go ahead and scale it. That's eh, obviously way too big. What I'm doing there. Let's get out of x ray so I can see what's happening. Needs to be narrower but taller. And it needs to be kind of cat eye shaped so we can just put a loop cut in the middle and scale that up. Can I scale those, but I don't want them going up the thing, so shift Z to lock the Z axis. Same thing here, select both of these, shift Z, oops, scale, shift Z to lock that axis, and bring it out. There we go, that's better. If you're worried about it being kind of not smooth, you could go ahead and throw on a subdivision. I'm not going to because my computer tries to crash when I do that, but it's an option. Looks like this thing's centered. Whoa, I can't see. Just scoot it back until it's not sticking out over the top. That way it's just in the middle only. Make sure it does match what's going on with the picture. And then we can do the same thing. Let's tell this we want to boolean union cylinder fly. Select the cylinder, delete it. Double check that your internal geometry didn't get all screwed up. Still looks pretty good. Making progress. So I looked over at the drawing again and noticed that the chevron, I think that's what that is, is uh, a little bit higher than the rest of this. So what we're going to do is edit mode on this, we're going to grab faces, and then we'll go to edge mode, select the central edge, and scoot them out just a little bit. Not a whole lot, just some. And with the central edge, what we can do is grab just that one. I don't know what's going on there. Grab it on the X. There we go. This doesn't quite go to the top. Almost. And then we'll go ahead and... You know what? Let's, let's, uh, let's grab both of these at the same time. Scoot them out almost to the top. Doesn't quite go to the top of the thing, but almost. I think at this point I'll go ahead and bevel both of these. I don't like the way they look. It's probably pretty good. And then the drawing has little lines all the way around, little starburst. I think those might be depressions, might be raised, I'm not real sure. Um, they'd probably look better if they were raised, so let's do that. So there's a few ways you can go about getting those starburst lines. Uh, you could try poking the faces, you could connect vertices and all kind of other stuff. It may or may not work. I'm going to do something a little different just for fun. Uh, let's grab a bunch of, let's make sure I'm not in edit mode, grab a bunch of cylinders. So once you get a cylinder scale to more or less what you're after, if you make the details too small they're not going to show up in FDM printing. Then you can go ahead and rotate them however you need. And then place them where you want. Shift D to duplicate. Bring that over here. Rotate. What is that? 45? 
rotate negative 90, close enough. Put that there. And then just start putting them all around. If you need to go back and change the size later, that's easy enough to do. You can go into edit mode, grab the face you need to move, and just hit G twice so it slides, and just slide it to where it needs to be. Just like that. So go through doing that, get all your little things everywhere, and then Boolean union them. I'll show you that in a second. Alright, so before we get all crazy with the booleans, what we're going to do is go ahead and grab these ones and actually delete them because I'm going to show you something else. Make sure this is even. I'm sure the uh, starburst thing was just for effect, but I want it to be even because it's carved into a uh, sarcophagus. It's not like an action line. So let's go ahead and hide the image so we can see just our coffin without the image messing with us. And we want to get all these positioned exactly perfect. There we go, something like that. So that the back edge of these makes kind of like a continuous sort of deal. And this looks a little bit neater to me. So now what we're going to do is select all of these. We will right click and join them. Make sure you set all your transforms. And then add a modifier, mirror. We want it on the Y. It's totally in the wrong spot, but that's okay. Go into edit mode. That'll let you move it around how you need. Out of edit mode, you can then scoot back to where you were. I want to move it on only the Y. That one was actually in the center. So what we're going to want to do is go to edit mode. If you've selected one that you don't want part of your thing, just hit L to select all that are linked. Go ahead and separate the selection because I don't need that one. So now with this one, add a modifier, mirror on the Y. It's not lining up, that's fine. Go to edit mode, hit all, or A for all, then you can grab it, move it around, get out of edit mode, and when you grab it, it will move the whole thing. So just go ahead and position that exactly where we want it, exactly where that is. It's too far apart. Just bring it in some. Just like that. Then we can go ahead and apply that modifier, grab this one, join them. So now the whole mess is one thing. And then make sure that they are in your lid about as far as you want them. I want them a little bit past center. Just grab on the X, squish it in, and tell your, uh, oops, this one's not the same. There it is, okay. Tell your lid, it's boolean, union, all of these cylinders that should have worked. Apply, delete the cylinders and find out. Yep, there we go. Go ahead and double check your mesh to make sure you didn't screw it up. Everything looks good. 
now we have the starburst effect. Looks kind of strange. Big bold black lines, but yeah. If you wanted to, you could have pointed those ends or tapered them or something. Now that I'm looking at it, I think I might go back and do that. So if you want to scale all of them the same, uh, I'm sure there's a better way to do it than what I'm doing here, but uh, just to make sure that they're all the same, if that matters, it probably doesn't on a starburst, but if it does matter, just hit S to scale, and then if you want to go smaller, hit point first or decimal, and then whatever number, it'll be in tens, so four would be 40, and that's 40% 40 scale, and it gives a sort of a pointed look without being pointy. You should probably also bevel the other edge if you really wanted to. Those ones you can do all at the same time, just to make sure that they all match. That's what I think I'll end up doing. So, yeah, go ahead and go through scale 0.4, everything. If you try to do several of them at the same time, what's going to happen is... They try to scale in relation to each other. I don't know how to stop that from happening. If you know how, let me know. Okay, that's the scaled. That already looks a whole lot better. Now let's go through and bevel all the back ends. To select multiples, just hold down shift and then click. And if you're zoomed in too far, it's going to take a lot of effort to pan around the screen. Alright, they're all selected. Control B to bevel. And I want that bevel to go just below the surface. I hit Control Z to make sure I didn't overlap the bevel towards the end. Hey, look, microphones. They're all below the surface. There we go. That looks a whole lot better. So now we'll go ahead and boolean that into the lid. Could actually bevel these tips too if you wanted. Might not be a terrible idea. Yeah, before I click them all, let's make sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and bevel those, those into the lid. That looks pretty good. That's the other thing too, if you're um, doing something and you're not really sure if that's going to work. Or if you did do something and it's just not quite what you're after, you can always just hit Control Z to undo. Uh, Blender's buffer, memory, whatever on that is pretty good. I think you can set it to be higher. Also Control S is to save and Blender now has backup saves. So if you save over something and you did something you're like, oh man, I can't get it back, you can. It's in there. You just have to go and uh, enable, uh, what's it called, backup saves or something like that so you can see them. All right, the bevel on these doesn't need to be terribly extreme, just enough to drop it below the surface. Make sure you didn't uh, go over the points of anything. Looks good. And we'll get out of edit mode, and that's that looks a lot, lot more natural, I think. All right, go ahead and do your union modifier. There we go. Internal geometry is good; it didn't go through or anything strange. So now we have that. What else we got to add on here? Let's see. That takes care of the eye, the starburst, the chevron, the ridge in the center. Oh, the eye's got a 
something going on there. It kind of looks like a ridge, so it's, it's um, select. Hard to tell what I have selected. Let's go ahead and go to vertice mode, grab that one on the X, and bring it up just a hair. Now we have a ridge there as well. Okay, so last thing to do are these frilly bits. So I'm going to do the frilly bits the same way. I'm going to use a different object and turn that into the shape I want and then use that as a uh, Boolean cutting tool. So you've got to make this shape. All right, so we want to add these uh, S-shaped curves here. But a simple bend modifier, whatever, is not going to do these complex shapes. So go ahead and add a curve, add a bezier. Not real sure how to say that. It's uh, behind the paper on that that uh, thing there. You can't see it because our orientation here. What we're going to do is rotate it on the Y 90 degrees. Gonna move it over here. Go to edit mode. We're going to put the start of it. Wrong button. We're gonna put the start of it down here and the next part of it right there and then if you grab these the ends of these control handles here you can use rotate or grab whichever you prefer grab will let you shrink it and extend it rotate keeps its length but just moves it a little bit so whichever it is you're trying to do doesn't really matter but you're gonna grab these control handles and start positioning this curve so that the little fish bones follow all the way around so you grab the middle of the last one, hit E to extrude, bring it up to where you want, rotate everything around, and just kind of keep doing that until you get it looking right. If the curve's not cooperating with you, um, it's just kind of fiddly, you just got to keep moving it around. So we'll just keep doing this until you get it all situated how you want. And then we'll do the next step. Alright, well, that's pretty close, but uh, we're going to edit that in a second anyway. So, right now, what we're going to do is pick a point, one either end doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go with the top point. And then, while you're in edit mode, click on curve, because it's curve is what you're working with. Go to snap, you want to snap cursor to selected. Now it puts the cursor there. Tab out of edit mode, and then just right click, set origin to 3D cursor. Now we will go ahead and add in a cylinder. We will scale the cylinder quite large. I didn't just scale it that large. Scale it very long on the Z. Scale it down. And then edit mode. Put in a bunch of loop cuts. Doesn't really matter how many you put because this pops up down here. I'm just going to keep it 100 and 100 on the uh, vertice count there. Now we'll go ahead and add a modifier to the uh, cylinder. We want a subdivision surface. This might seem like overkill, but it'll make sense in a minute. So after you've got your subdivision on, you go to edit mode, go to vertice mode, pick the very top vertice there, and then same thing, except this time you're working with a mesh. So go to the mesh tab, snap cursor to selected. What is selected? More than what I meant to have selected. That's what. Okay, go to tab out of edit mode and then right click set origin to 3D cursor. Once you got your your uh, origin set, you can then grab your uh, post there, bring the origin as close to the origin you're starting with on the curve. Make sure everything is good and good and go. Add modifier, curve, object, the curve you made, and there you go. It's gonna snap to your curve. Obviously, it's not fitting there, so what do we do about that? Am I in edit mode? Is you simply 
remember it's it's perfectly up and down on the z-axis when this when the as the curve is not on there so if you scale it on the z it will actually just stretch it all along the thing there you can scale the whole thing smaller to make it thinner if you need to and if it gets too short just scale it on the z again to bring the length back out so now you can tell that my little snake hook thing here is not really working quite right it doesn't match the uh thing in the background so what we got to do is click on the curve why can i not see it there we go go to edit the curve and then you can still grab these points and move them around until you get everything exactly how you want and if you've got a spot where you just quite can't get it to work right you can select two of these and then right click and subdivide and then put another one in the middle between them and you can then use that to get your tighter curve now, i don't know about this right here that's going to be tricky mostly because the way it was drawn i maybe should have traced this one over here actually but i also think that the drawing is more of a guide than a dead set you have to do it this way so i can kind of fudge stuff a little bit where I need to so that looks pretty close to what I want I just need to compare that to the coffin lid make sure that the thickness is pretty good i wanted it about the same as these ones up here so it's a little bit thick of course if you keep scaling you can you know shoot the tail way out the end there something like that maybe not sure about this bottom curve i don't really like that one might have to change that some but it needs to fit inside this area so so i started on the drawing thing and now i'm just sort of doing my own thing here want to get a really smooth continuous curve along the whole length of the thing here it's giving me fits that's that's better there we go I didn't quite follow the exact drawing that was there I think I kind of like that better though a little bit so now if I were to get out of edit mode Grab both of those, so I want them to move together. Yep, yep, and all that stuff. Grab both of those. Bring them on out to the coffin lid so I can see what's going on with the uh, effect there. So the only thing I don't like about that is that it's round. It almost feels like it should be made out of a cube. So it'd be nice and rigid and square. The round looks strange. I'm going to redo that out of a cube. And I'll be right back. Alright, there we go. It does definitely look better as a cube. But I'm going to have to mess with this again. Because it's just not quite lining up like I need it to because of the cubes uh, really harsh geometry on the edges it doesn't want to curve really sharp like this let's go ahead and bring this back to where the original drawing was yeah it's just this tight bend right in here that's giving me problems but I think that'll probably be alright Get rid of some of that length. We don't need it. Try and smooth this out some. And go like this. Now we can see what it would look like with uh, sharp edges. That is certainly better. I still don't like this bottom curve. I think once you get it close on your drawing, it's probably best to either hide that drawing or uh, 
do something in like this to where your thing is in front of the drawing. Make it to where you can't see it, basically. And then you can just sort of make it match your model better. Alrighty, there we go. I think that's probably a bit better. It kind of matches the model a little better in my opinion. So then what we will do is go to this one, go to your actual object, and hit apply. You can delete that curve. You don't need that anymore. This is now that shape. and scoot it back don't forget that you're also going to need to rotate it a little bit so do that rotate it to match the angle of the box I don't think I rotated it quite enough ah I see so it needs to rotate out this way some as well. And then just add a mirror modifier. We want that on the Y, not the X. Go to edit mode, all, grab, scoop. Okay. Go ahead and apply it. Edit mode, you want to hit L to grab all of those. Separate selection, and that will allow you to rotate this one as much as you need to to get it to fit properly. Just like that. And you can uh, shift click and join them together. Tell the coffin lid that you want to union. Uh, I don't know which cubes. They're all named cube. I don't bother to rename anything. Just use the medicine dropper. There you go. Double check that the inside geometry isn't all messed up. Nope, looks good. So, the bottom still has these poles, little holders, and this thing. So go ahead and put that on real fast. The poles are going to be Let's hide that. The poles are going to be touching the side. It won't be any um, room for the hands. I think that was the requested thing there. Let's make sure that our thickness is correct before we do anything. It looks more sarcophagus thickness than it does coffin. But I think it's going to have to be to make room for the details. Because if they're too small, it's just not going to print right. Of course, you know what's coming for the poles. We're going to do a cylinder. Bring that over. Scale it on the Z. Um, going to need to rotate that whatever angle this thing is. I have absolutely no idea. We'll just eyeball it. It'll be fine. Scale it a little bit smaller. And then we can go back to here. So it's 9 degrees apparently. 10 degrees. So you can make that 0 again if you need to scale this on the Z. Duplicate it with Shift D. And then hit Y before you do anything else so you can scoot it straight over. And then the rotation here, we're going to leave it alone. We'll just put a negative in front of it. And it'll be the exact opposite of the other one. We want these to fit inside a little bit. We don't want there to be any separation for the hands. Let's 
scoot them up a little bit. Bring them down the side so they're about centered. You can also bring in your lid to make sure everything's still lining up right. So these poles look about centered between the bottom and the lid. Maybe a little bit too much. There we go. So now we can join those. We will merge them to the box as long as they're not sticking through. Doesn't look like they are. Union, union, cylinder one. Apply, delete the cylinders, double check the mesh, it is good, or geometry, so there's the poles, now we need a couple brackets to go over the poles, alright, so for the um, little holder deals that go on there, let's see how many has he got on here, just two, so for those, and there's balls on the end of these rods, okay, so for the Poles first, we will go ahead and add in a couple of cubes and a um, cylinder. Bring them all over here where we're working. They need to be rotated the same as that. They're pretty close to it. Just kind of shift everything around until you get it to line up nice and neat. Need those to move up this way. Not sure how that got off. That's okay. So there's a little gap right there, we don't want that, so we'll just scale this up until that goes away. If it's a little bit bigger than the holder pieces, that's totally fine. We want both of these to be a little smaller this direction. And then of course you want to make sure you're not sticking through the wall. So we'll grab these faces here. And bring them in like that. And now we can do the uh, same Boolean trick we've been doing. So there's the poles with the little holders. If you wanted to, you could put um, little rivets on the holders or something like that. I may. I did notice on the drawing that the ends of the poles have like a fancy ball thing going on. So do that real quick. It's uh, pretty simple. Same thing we've been doing, just a slightly different shape. In this case, we're going to use a UV sphere. So we'll go to edit mode. Grab. Eh. Throw faces there. Delete them. Delete the whole bottom of it. And then grab this bottom edge, extrude it along the Z a little bit, grab that row of faces that's now straight, and extrude along normals just a little bit in that direction. There we go, something like that. And then we will go into here. So like that edge loop and fill it. Now it's a solid little igloo looking thing. Of course, 
works, we want to have that rotate about 9.7 degrees, I think that's what the pole was. Scale it down. Still too big. Try to get even spacing all the way around it. Make sure that you are not poking into the inside of the box. It's not. And then we can go ahead and, you know the drill, Boolean, Union, Edison Dropper, Sphere, Apply. And that I'm going to move straight Y. And then I'll just adjust the rotation to negative, uh, maybe, that's pretty good, probably also check over here to make sure it actually worked, it did, there we go, now the poles have like a little cap on them, look a bit nicer. I do think that these things could stand to have some rivets just for looks, but I also know that that will never print an FDM, so it's also kind of pointless. So you probably won't uh, notice any kind of difference if these are beveled for printing an FDM, but you certainly would in resin. And it looks nicer on the screenshot, so I'll go ahead and give those a little bit of a bevel. Doesn't have to be anything drastic. Certainly don't need that many lines. Ooh, hello. Just a little bit so it's not flat and sharp. Why did that get beveled? Undo. You can also use x-ray mode to look through and make sure that you did not accidentally grab something like that line right there. If you did, just uh, control click or control box click, shift click, whatever. Unselect it. I have no idea how those got selected. It happens sometimes though. Just a little bit of a bevel there. So it looks a little more refined. So then if you want to get a picture, you can come over to this one. Turn off the floor and the axis and the cursor and the origin. You can, you can drop in lights and change all this stuff if you want. So the last thing that I always like to do is bring it over into Cura and slice it and hit the preview. Uh, with no supports or anything, just so I can see if there's any sort of holes or if details are not showing up for some reason. Now you can see here this is not really working too well at the uh, appropriate scale, so double the size and... And yeah, it looks pretty good. Details are showing up. This would be a two inch long coffin though, so it might be kind of big. I did try to show this before, but uh, I forgot to hit record. I actually had some issues here. The coffin itself, the box was showing up as uh, some red surfaces there and the lid was filling in completely. That's because my um, faces, my normals were backwards on the faces. So how you fix that is over in Blender here. You just select your model, go into edit mode, hit alt N and then recalculate the outside. Assuming you don't have any holes in your model or any internal geometry that's you know, doing weird things, then uh, that should fix the normals issue for you. What was going on is the inside rim here was facing the wrong direction, so it thought it was needed to fill it in, and on the box here, 
some of the others were backwards too. It's my fault, I did something strange when I did the extrude. But anyway, once you're all done, you just go up here, file and export as STL, or whatever you prefer. And of course this file is available on the Dungeoneers profile on Thingiverse. Here is the number, there will be a link to it in the description below. So I am going to call this right here good and send the screenshot over to Hate, see what he thinks, if there's any adjustments he wants made. But otherwise, this would be your coffin. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.